Hall County Sports is also brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Come check out the latest deals. When you go green, go Green Ford. And also brought to you by McEver Road United Methodist Church. Free services every Sunday morning, Kids Town, Adult Education Small Groups, and Community Outreach. McEver Road UMC is dedicated to transforming the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Hall County Sports. I'm your host, Gary Glenn. We start things off by taking it to the hoop in our first segment. First of all, on the college hardwood, Bernal seniors Ashley Higgins and Meg Henson scored 17 and 13 points, respectively, in SSAC basketball action at Emmanuel. But the Tigers fell short on the road, 73-59 the final. Tigers team nearly pulled the upset of the season, though, when they played their final regular season game against number 9 Lee University. Came up short at home, 77-71. The win elevated Lee's record to 26 and 3 and 14 and 1 in the conference. Tigers fell to 17, 13, 6 and 10. It was senior night at the Bernal Gym, and the seven who played their last game at home didn't disappoint. Higgins led three others in scoring with 19 points. Tasha Anderson scored a career high 10. Meg Henson chipped in 15 points to go with nine rebounds. Vicky Wilson had 11 points, four assists, and five rebounds. We bring to the show now the coach of the Golden Tigers. Gary Bays and and Gary, that's been uh, uh, sort of the season a little bit. You you came close in some of the, you won the games really. I guess most of the games anyway that you were supposed to win and came really close in the others. And that's both frustrating but encouraging at the same time. It is because we had those seven seniors and we felt like we were ready to step up a notch and win those close games against those good teams. But we just didn't quite have enough to get it done. So it, it was frustrating in the fact that. We felt like we had a 20-win season team this year, but uh, now this conference tournament time, and now it's time to see if we can go out there and win some of those games against those good teams. Well, there you go. And at all levels of basketball, you play for seeding purposes in the regular season and to get sharp, but we all know it's tournament time that matters. Exactly. And that's how you get yourself to the national tournament is by winning that conference tournament. So it's a three-game series. And uh, we're going to go over there and see what we can do. What has been both encouraging and frustrating about this season, other than the fact that maybe you came close to some of those, those close games like that? Well, I'm encouraged because we stepped up our schedule this year. We played eight games against teams that were at the national tournament last year. So it's the toughest schedule by far that we've played. And we played with all those teams this year, as I knew we could. But the frustrating part, as we said before, is <clears throat> there were a number of games, probably five or six games, that we could have and should have probably won that we didn't. So, you know, our record instead of 17-13 right now, we thought should be 23-7. and seven. So <clears throat> that's frustrating, but we've proven, again, that we can play with the best in the country. We've done that over and over. So now uh, it's time to go see if we can do it in the conference tournament. Well, the last few years, you know, when you've won these games and won some close games and, and made some noise in the postseason, it was like a, you know, we're just kind of happy to be here. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you over that by now? Yeah, we are. I mean, this is our fourth year, and uh, those seniors, five of them have been with us from the beginning, and we've been aiming for this season to see. And our goal at the beginning of the season was to get to the national tournament, and that still is our goal. So if we don't go over there and get really close to or at least – give ourselves a chance to go to the national tournament. We'll be disappointed with this season. Now, you don't have to travel all that far. No, it's, it's over at Rome. In Rome, in Rome. Yeah. Uh, so who are you going to be catching, you think, first round? We're playing Southern Poly in the first round. And how did you do with them this year? Well, they beat us twice. Um, in fact, the second time at our place, they embarrassed us. Mm. At their place, it was a good game, lost by 13, I think. Um, we have a matchup problem with them. They have a, an All-American post player that we have a tough time with. and. Uh, you know, they, I think they won 18 in a row this year before they lost. So they're, they're legitimate. They're the kind of team that I think they're ranked 18th in the country right now going into the tournament. So they're going to go to the national tournament based on their national ranking. Mm -hmm. So um, if we can go in there and knock them off, then uh, we've got a good shot, I think. So when you look at the, f the game tape and all of that, you said you have some matchup problems with them. What do you do? Well, we're going to change things up a little bit. Uh, we're going to play more zone than we normally do and try to pack it in around the basket because they hurt us at the basket primarily. And they also hurt us with their press. So those two things we've got to solve. We've got to solve that press and we've got to keep things out of the basket area. And of course, well, as we've said before, you know, defense is the key in basketball because offense comes and goes. It's right. streaky, but defense is something you hang your hat on every day. It day. is. It is. And, you know, we've always been a team since the beginning because we really haven't been strong in the post. 
uh, all four years, we've had to rely a lot on our perimeter game and our three-point shooting. And that comes and goes. If you're hitting them, you're going to win games. And if you can not, hit them. I mean, I've seen can. you hit them. Yeah. We, we did a game where you hit them. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. But you can't rely on that in a tournament. You know, we've got to go into this tournament looking for better shots around the basket if we're going to have a chance to win. All right, future of Brunel basketball before <laughs> I let you get away. You graduate in seven seniors, so now do you, do you go out and you, do you get the aircraft carrier like, uh, like Al McGuire used to talk about the, about the big man in the middle? Well, we'd like to. I mean, that's always been a goal for us is to recruit a quality post player, but it's difficult at our level. The real good post players are going to go to a higher level for the most part. So for us to get one, it'll probably have to be an international player if mm. we can find one. Uh, we've got four freshmen and two other players returning next year that we think are going to keep us solid. So recruiting this year becomes a matter of replacing some experience with some junior college players and continuing to upgrade the quality of the freshmen that we bring in. And before I let you get away, too, I want you to kind of look around at, at this area where we are, a basketball hotbed. <coughs> Unbelievable. All of our, at, at, at the time that we're doing this show, all of the Hall County teams that played in AAA, boys and girls, are all still alive in the, in the postseason. Yeah. That's something, Gary. It is. And, and it, it's the best basketball in the state of Georgia, all, all around northeast Georgia. But because it's so good, those players all go to a higher level. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's kind of a funny situation. You'd think we could get some of those players. But the ones that can help us get better are going to go to a higher level from here. Well, and but maybe you'll stick it. Just saw where Jay Shaw will have more on that. And he's transferred from Tech to Georgia Southern because he yeah. wants to play some more. Yeah, and we can always hope for that. A lot of times those kids might go someplace else and not get to play, and we can pick them up later. And we've done that a couple of times. So uh, you just got to keep your ears open and uh, hope that you can bring in a quality player or two. Gary Bays, head coach of the Bernard Golden Tigers basketball. Good luck in the tournament Thank and good you. luck with the program. All Thank right? you. Thank you. Okay. Turning to high school hoops, a little bit more on those seven AAA region championships that we told you about last week. Gainesville girls chanted three-peat as they won their third consecutive region title, beating old rival East Hall 49-37. Jamie Carnes led the way with 22 points and 10 rebounds. Jasmine Jenkins scored 15 for East Hall, while Morgan Jackson had 11 points for the Lady Vikings. Now, the North Hall boys won their first region title for the program since 1991, holding off West Hall late to win 50-42. The Trojans were led by Lance White and Candler Coker with 13 points apiece. Coker also grabbed 13 rebounds for the 24-3 Trojans. Spartans got 12 from Jarquise Young, 11 from Shunquist Stevens, and 10 from Dre Pugh. Stevens also had six rebounds and three steals. Third places went to the Flower Branch girls, who got 16 points from Jessica Harper and beat Creekview 48-37. And the East Hall, who were led by Charles Perry's 25 in their 65-62 edging of Johnson. Trey Dudley had 25 for the Knights in their loss. Now, going on to the first round of the state tournament, and the class of the first round of the state basketball playoffs, on the boys' side at least, was 7 AAA. All of the Hall County schools won, including fourth-seeded Johnson on the road at Carrollton, the champions of 6 AAA. Final was 73-71, Knights, as Trey Dudley hit for 22, and Johnson as a team made 12 three-pointers. Grant Cagle hit for a three for a one-point lead with 90 seconds in the game. He finished with 15 along with Chris Henry. Also on the road, East Hall beat Ringgold. It wasn't close, 62-37. Vikes won their 20th as J.C. Hampton scored 19, Kevin Blackwell 12, and Charles Perry 11. At home, West Hall got 25 points and 16 rebounds from big Shunquez Stevens and beat Cartersville 61-53. Region champions North Hall Wax Central of Carroll, 70 to 42. Chris Barnes led a scoring parade of 11 different Trojans. He had 15 points. Now, the seven AAA girls did almost as well. In fact, all of the Hall County schools won again. And number four, Creekview almost won. Uh, Carnes led the region champion Gainesville Lady Elephants to a 46 21 over Ringgold with 21 points, 10 rebounds, and five blocks. Number two seed East Hall caused 30 turnovers en route to a 60-47 victory over defending AAA champions Carrollton. Super Softs Jasmine Jenkins and Morgan Jackson led the way with 22 and 19 points respectively. Flowery Branch upset Southeast Whitfield 54-37. Jessica Harper with 24 points on the night. Kara Chilton at 11 points, 8 rebounds, 5 steals, and 3 blocks. Now, the Jefferson boys basketball team claimed the Region 8 AA title by a skinny point last week, easing by Riverside Military Academy 58 to 57. Riverside led by 19 points from Tarvin Dukes and 17 from Richard Tribble. Eagles then had a bad case of turnover-itis. 20 turnovers as a matter of fact in the state tournament and fell 65-52 to Spencer in the first round of state. 
Brandon McKinney did lead the Eagles with 19. Riverside finishes at 17 and 5 on the year. In single A, Lakeview's boys finish at 16 and 11 after an 89-67 first round loss to Pace Academy. Daniel Overa scored 20 to pace the Lions. Now, the wintry weather earlier this week threw another curve at the state playoffs. We'll have more on all of that and try to get you updated on our show on next week. More Hall County Sports after these timeouts. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting and a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905, Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. Hi folks, Butch Miller from Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville. You may be asking yourself, why drive to Gainesville to buy a new car? Well, the answer is obvious. First, we sell Hondas, one of the best cars in the world. Next, we're known for incredibly low prices, offering you more money for your trade-in and treating you the way you like to be treated. We're easy to get to from either Georgia 400 or I-985 on Browns Ridge Road in Gainesville. And remember folks, if you think you can get a better deal on a better car at Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville, you got that right. Does your business or home office have limited space? Let Office Pros experts show you how to turn small, cluttered areas into highly organized, efficient workspaces with cubicles completely planned and installed at surprisingly low prices. Office Pros experts will come to your location and help you plan the perfect office without the clutter. For companies downsizing, cubicles can double the capacity of existing 10 by 12 offices by installing just two cubicles. Call today for a free consultation. Let Office Pros put your business on the path to success. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Gary Glenn. It was an evening of faith and fellowship at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Banquet last Thursday night at Free Chapel Worship Center. The keynote speaker was supposed to be Greenville High School football coach Jeremy Williams, who's locked in a battle with Lou Gehrig's disease. But he was subbed for by his team chapel and a couple of his players, one of whom, the players that is, is waging his own war against cancer. However, the fact that Williams himself wasn't there turns out yeah, that was a good thing. Seems that Coach William's struggle got some national attention and the extreme home makeover people sent him on a vacation to California while they rebuilt his own personal home and the field house for the kids. What a great thing for him. Uh, those that were there, though, were still inspired by his story and some of the FCA's local efforts as well. FCA cares. FCA loves. FCA understands. FCA reaches. FCA listens. FCA guides. FCA leads. FCA touches. FCA hears. FCA feels. FCA believes. FCA strengthens. FCA inspires. FCA teaches. FCA chances. FCA rocks! FCA matters. FCA is Jesus we stand on! Now, if you would like to send a donation and be involved in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes ministry, here's the address. Fellowship of Christian Athletes, P.O. Box 656, Oakwood, Georgia, 30566. Again. FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Post Office Box 656, Oakwood, and the zip is 30566. I'm back to wrap it up when Hall County Sports concludes. Open hearts, open minds, open doors. Let's consider that church is a menu of adventure. Let's consider that open is a verb instead of a noun a word of action. What if church was less about Sunday and more about the other days of the week? Opening hearts, opening minds, opening doors. What if church wasn't just the place we go, but something we do? I want to be part of a church where 
everybody feels that they have a role to play and a place to be and are welcomed. That there's something for everyone. What if church wasn't just a building, but doors opening up a different experience that whoever knocks might find a journey to call their own? We have people that come in t-shirts and blue jeans and flip-flops and we do have our older generation that comes in ties and suits and we want everybody to feel comfortable. You know God is there because of the people that are there and you want to enjoy that same feeling of fullness and, and freedom. Let's rethink church then Sunday could be a day of reflection on all that we had accomplished Monday through Saturday. Then together, we can open hearts, open minds, and open doors. My name is Lloyd Smith. I'm Renee Barnett. My name's Alan Cudd. My name's Don Cooper. My name is Mike Stewart, and I attend McKeever Road United Methodist Church, the church on the hill here in Oakwood, Georgia. We'd love for you to come join us. This message has been brought to you by the people of the McEver Road United Methodist Church. Gary Cole, pastor. Are you struggling to get where you really want to be in life? Then get on the fast track to success at Lanier Technical College with five campuses, day, evening, and online classes, and many tuition and fees paid for by the Hope Grant. There's no better way to get where you really want to be. Now more than ever, high-paying employers are looking for highly trained individuals with hands-on technical training. So stop struggling and get moving. Lanier Technical College. Get ready. Go! Back to wrap it up with some of the local highlights from last week in spring sports. First of all, let's go to baseball. Gainesville opened their season with a 10-4 win at Central Gwinnett. Hunter Anglin struck out five and gave up one hit in four and third innings. He got run support from Will Maddox, Stephen Mason, and K.J. McAllister. Maddox hit a home run, had four RBI, and scored a couple of runs. Mason went three for five with three runs scored, and McAllister went two for two with two doubles and three walks. Hab Central did edge the Elephants later in the week 4-3, and McAllister had two of Gainesville's three hits. Chris White had three hits to lead the Johnson Knights to a 9-6 win over Cedar Shoals in their season opener. Ryan Farmer contributed two hits when Griffith got the win. Johnson then won a Mercy Rule 21-3 game over Forest Park. As Taylor Whitmore had three hits and six RBI. One of those came on one of those hits came on a three-run home run. A.G. Benefield struck out six for the win. Logan Petho, Blake Stacy, and Chris White had two hits apiece for the Knights. East Hall bounced back from a 5-4 loss to Cedar Shoals as Drew Adams and J.C. White each went 3-4 for four with a solo homer in the Vikings 7-6 win over Union County. North Hall beat Buford 7-6. Ryan Pitts and Chris Stevens had a couple of key hits on RBI singles. Jackson Coker had a two-run double for the Trojans, scoring Lee Sisson, who also had two hits. Trojan teams then dominated Lakeview, winning 16-1 in four innings as Chris Stevens got the complete game win for the Trojans in the win. And Coker had five RBI. North Hall pounded out 11 hits, led by Jacob Brewster, with three singles for the Trojans, who were undefeated at the start of the week. Lakeview evened its record at 1-1 one one as University of Georgia signee Ralston Cash had two home runs, six RBI, and four hits in the Lions' 12-2 whipping of St. Francis. Taylor Simpson got the win and picked up a couple of hits himself. Riverside won a wild 20-17 slugfest with Pickens after giving up 14 runs right off the bat, so to speak. Brian Cox and Michael Crespo each had four RBI, and they each went three for five. Now, on the college diamond, the Brown softball team swept Faulkner 2-1 and 10-1 in five innings. That last one, freshman Anna Manis pitched a complete game in the first one, striking out three. Sarah Applegarth hit a solo home run at the top of the fourth. Lena Laser had four hits on the day. And in the second game, the Tigers pounded out 11 hits. Manus and Ellen Black each had a hit, and the two of them combined for the win, with Black getting a decision and Manus finishing off the last two innings. Tigers completed a very successful Western swing by defeating number 22 Auburn Montgomery 5-1 in the first game of a doubleheader. Second game ended in a rare 5-5 tie because of darkness. After that, the Tigers were 10-1-1 on the season and a league-leading 5-0-1 in the SSAC. Taylor Kelly had a fine game in the first one, going one for three with two RBI, as triple and two stolen bases. Laser continued her hot streak, hitting two doubles and driving in a run. Maness went the distance on the mound, collecting two strikeouts. Black took over the pitching duties in the second game and struck out three. Morgan Smith, who'd driven in three runs in the last one over Faulkner, had three hits and drove in two runs. Sarah Applegarth also had two RBI on two hits. We're now going to be traveling to Orangeburg, South Carolina this weekend to take on NCAA Division I South Carolina State. 
in a doubleheader. All right. In soccer, the Buford boys and North Hall boys tied at two all. Marcus Yanos and Blake Knowles scored for the Trojans. Gainesville swept Banks County 10 0 girls on six zip boys. Hartley Carter had the hat trick, while fellow freshman Mary Catherine Dempsey scored two goals and had three assists for the ladies in that route, while Irving Salgado scored two goals for the male elephants. Gainesville's girls got both goals from Carter to beat White County 2 1. Raquel Castillo had both assists. Red Elephant boys walloped the Warriors 10 zip. Russ Puckett scored six. Count them, six of those 10 goals. Chester T. Wanda Barrows girls had a one-all tie. Kelsey Newcomb kicked one in from 30 yards out in the second half of the draw. While West Hall swept Lumpkin County, Tanya Perez had the hat trick, and Rachel Klein scored twice in the Lady Spartans' 10-1 route. And West Hall's boys spread it around in their 4-0 shutout. Riverside goalie Victor Salcedo got four saves en route to a 3-0 shutout of Banks County. We'll let the Longhorn Invitational let North Gwinnett. Flower Brant's girls beat Lakeside to Cab 5-1. Alex Lee scored twice for the Lady Falcons. North Georgia Christians got both goals from Rick Valentine to tie Trinity Christian at 2-all. In lacrosse, they do play lacrosse in these parts. Riverside beat Wade Hampton 13-2. West McNally and Alex Parks had four goals, and Jeff Frankie had three. In golf, North Hall's Landry Haynes shot a four under par. That led the Trojans to a win over Johnson last week. And then the Trojan boys took six out of 20 teams in the Coal Mountain Invitational and coming. Haynes 76 was good enough for ninth individually. Stephanie Lightfoot led the Lady Red Elephants over North Hall in an eight-hole match due to darkness. North Hall's Hope West was the low medalist on the day, while Gainesville's Leanne Nobles led the Lady Elephants to a 10-stroke win over Dawson County. In tennis, West Hall and Johnson split. Lady Knights and the Spartan boys winning, while Gainesville and Flower Branch also split with the wins going to the Branch girls and the Gainesville boys. North Hall's boys raised a racket and beat White County, while later in the week, the West Hall boys edged Gainesville 3-2, while the Johnson girls scratched out a 3-2 win over North Forsyth. Chester T's boys shut out Pickens 5 love, while the North Hall girls edged out Lumpkin County 3-2, and Lakeview's girls knocked off Prince Avenue 4-1, while North Hall's boys shut out Lumpkin County 5 love. Turning to college tennis, the number 7 Bernal tennis team opened conference play and did so in impressive fashion by defeating Emmanuel 9 love, with the victory of the Tigers even their season record at 2-2 two and, two and went through the entire match without losing a single game. Tennis Tigers began their annual spring break tour with a stop in Orlando. Took on NCAA Division II Lake Superior State out of Michigan. Tigers dominated that match, coming away with a 9-0, another 9-0 shutout victory. Junior swimmer Luciane Camura out of Brazil was named Golden Tiger of the Week for the week of February 16, 23rd for her performance in the Appalachian Swimming Conference Championships at Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. Camura won the only gold medal for the Tigers with a school record of 102.68 in the 100 back, Followed that up with another record at 212.04 in the 200 backstroke. She also participated in five different relay teams, three of which broke records, including a third overall in the 200 free relay. Coach Gabby Matthews was ecstatic about the performance of Kimura and the entire team as they finished in fifth place out of the 14 schools in attendance. The team is now prepping for the upcoming NAIA National Championships to be held in St. Charles, Missouri. All right, time now to name our Athletes of the Week, and we're going to take it to the hoop for that. For the male athlete of the week, West Hall's Shunquest Stevens, who had a great week on the court for the Spartans. And on the female side, well, Gainesville's Jamie Carnes, ditto for that. Okay, a few more things to wrap it up. One of Hall County's better-known alumni is transferring. Former Flowery Branch quarterback Jay Bo Shaw says he will leave Georgia Tech at the end of the current semester and transfer to Georgia Southern. Seems he wants some more playing time. Also would like to get an education degree, which they offer at Southern, so he can get into teaching and coaching. I'm following the footsteps of his dad, I suppose, there. Former Tech assistant Jeff Monkin, by the way, is taking over as the new head man for the Georgia Southern Eagles, and he's going to run that triple option that J-Bo is so familiar with. Because he is transferring to a lower division in the NCAA, J-Bo will be eligible immediately. Won't have to sit out for a year. Although, of course, he's still going to have to earn any playing time, of course. He actually played more at Tech, you may remember, as a freshman than he did this past season. Congrats to local Iron Dog bench pressers, Gainesville's Tim T. Moon, now the 10th rated bench presser in all of the country, regardless of class, in the single ply equipped category, while Commerce's Cleve Tatum ranks number eight in the raw class in the bench. And Atlanta Falcons linebacker Coy Wire was the guest speaker for the Distinguished Speakers Program at Riverside Military Academy last week. Among his many accomplishments, Wire was hired in 2008 to serve as the keynote speaker for the United States Department of Education's National Conference in Houston, Texas. We plan on having some of his remarks for you next week. That's all for this week. I'm Gary Glenn. Tune in next week for more Hall County Sports.
there are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting and a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905, Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. Hi folks, Butch Miller from Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville. You may be asking yourself, why drive to Gainesville to buy a new car? Well, the answer is obvious. First, we sell Hondas, one of the best cars in the world. Next, we're known for incredibly low prices, offering you more money for your trade-in and treating you the way you like to be treated. We're easy to get to from either Georgia 400 or I-985 on Browns Ridge Road in Gainesville. And remember folks, if you think you can get a better deal on a better car at Milton Martin Honda in Gainesville, you got that right. Does your business or home office have limited space? Let Office Pros experts show you how to turn small, cluttered areas into highly organized, efficient workspaces with cubicles completely planned and installed at surprisingly low prices. Office Pros experts will come to your location and help you plan the perfect office without the clutter. For companies downsizing, cubicles can double the capacity of existing 10 by 12 offices by installing just two cubicles. Call today for a free consultation. Let Office Pros put your business on the path to success. Open hearts, open minds, open doors. Let's consider that church is a menu of adventure. Let's consider that open is a verb instead of a noun, a word of action. What if church was less about Sunday and more about the other days of the week? Opening hearts, opening minds, opening doors. What if church wasn't just the place we go, but something we do? I want to be part of a church where everybody feels that they have a role to play and a place to be and are welcomed. That there's something for everyone. What if church wasn't just a building, but doors opening up a different experience that whoever knocks might find a journey to call their own? We have people that come in t-shirts and blue jeans and flip-flops and we do have our older generation that comes in ties and suits and we want everybody to feel comfortable. You know God is there because of the people that are there and you want to enjoy that same feeling of fullness and, and freedom. Let's rethink church. Then Sunday could be a day of reflection on all that we had accomplished Monday through Saturday. Then together, we can open hearts, open minds, and open doors. My name is Lloyd Smith. I'm Renee Barnett. My name's Alan Cudd. My name's Don Cooper. My name is Mike Stewart, and I attend McKeever Road United Methodist Church, the church on the hill here in Oakwood, Georgia. We'd love for you to come join us. This message has been brought to you by the people of the McKeever Road United Methodist Church. Gary Cole, pastor. Are you struggling to get where you really want to be in life? Then get on the fast track to success at Lanier Technical College with five campuses, day, evening, and online classes, and many tuition and fees paid for by the Hope Grant. There's no better way to get where you really want to be. Now more than ever, high-paying employers are looking for highly trained individuals with hands-on technical training. So stop struggling and get moving. Lanier Technical College. Get ready. Go!